Hello all you people watching YouTube. I am Bruce and together with my wife Shirley we started a channel Pelican Adventures. Some years ago we purchased a yacht. We were both working and the idea of exploring the gulf and surrounds in our spare time sounded appealing. We've explored much of the east coast of New Zealand from Tauranga to the Bay of Islands over the past seven years. About 26 months ago we ordered a caravan from Crusader in Melbourne with the idea of selling the boat and travelling New Zealand as a new adventure. A little after that time we started this channel with a test video. That van finally arrived in June this year so we've decided to restart the channel but with a revised name, Pelican Crusaders. This is to reflect the con continuation of our boat's name and our new adventures in our Crusader caravan. If you enjoy the video please don't forget to press the subscribe, ring the bell, press the like button and leave comments and ask questions as required. This video is the first in the caravan series and focuses on the end result of the work done to achieve a mostly all Victron power installation. Installed is over 1500 watts of solar, a 3000 watt inverter and 660 amp hours of batteries. Enjoy. This is a big all Victron caravan power setup except for the solar panels which are from high tech and the DC loads which are mostly as installed by Crusader on the BM Pro factory setup. There are 1505 watts of solar on the roof comprising of 7 215 watt panels. Under the bed inside the van is a BM Pro original van DC supply with all charging options removed and the fully Victron AC power supply battery and battery charge system. Shown to the left of the video frame are two 330 amp hour high discharge lithium batteries. These give a total of slightly more than 8 kilowatt hours when fully charged. These batteries have a maximum discharge capacity of 600 amps at 12 volts DC or 7600 watts. This is above the inverter maximum draw capability. To the right of the batteries is the Multi Plus 3000. 
This has a maximum discharge of 6000 watts, so below the battery discharge maximum. On the wall in front of the MultiPlus are three 100 series 50 amp solar controllers for the roof array. Forward of and mounted to the floor is a 12 volt DC controlled output controller for supplying computer equipment also installed. On the left edge of the front wall is the BMS unit. This treats both batteries as one large unit. As mentioned at the beginning of this video, the BM Pro battery system was retained to handle most DC loads. Shown is a 130 solar control for portable panels. Lastly, the Serbo GX which controls all the data of the assembly. As we move into the living area and to retain the display position of the BM Pro Odyssey screen by replacing it with the Serbo GX 7 inch touch panel, cable trunking was installed at the top of all the cupboards. The Serbo HDMI cable and network ethernet was run through this duct. Shown is the Serbo GX 7 inch display. There is also a 5 inch version available. The display is the main interface for monitoring the system state. There is also a Victron app for mobile devices which is available online if internet connection is present. This page shown is my preferred display for information but other options exist. Top left of the screen shows all AC loads being used. Directly below is solar and car charge in real time. Below that is the DC load being used also in real time. Directly to the right shows a battery percentage left and the system state charging, idle or discharging. Moving right again is the system time and alarm state. The far right of this install shows tank levels including fresh water, grey water and LPG. And last on this screen at the bottom there is an adjustable mains current charge value multi-plus states and water pump operation values. Two Ethernet twin ports were installed into the saloon area for network options. This van is fitted with network attached storage and a gigabit switch as well as the traditional Wi-Fi coverage. As you can see from the touch panel display, it is approaching 11.30am. It is the 3rd of September and a mostly cloudy day with some brief sunny interludes. Here in New Zealand we are at the very start of spring, so the weather is more grey than bright. The left second panel down, green panel of the display, shows the incoming solar and car charge power in watts. In this instance, this is all solar as the car is disconnected. Once connected, the car will supply an additional 700 watts approximately. The leftmost blue panel to the bottom of the display shows the watts and current in amps the batteries are receiving. Also displayed here is the battery percentage of full and actual voltage. By touching the panel and selecting the menu option you are presented with the screen shown. In this screen are options to rename, view history, view any errors that may have been and recalibrate certain functions as allowed. In the pages option will revert the screen back to the standard display. There are as standard the display I more favour, the tank display with options for individual view type. and a simple in-out graphic interface. Mm. 
This is a Phillips induction cooktop. I'll turn that on. Eighteen hundred watts. Ibis four air conditioner. Also turn that on sixteen degrees. Now the air conditioner will take a small amount of time to power up. top right corner of the screen you can see 2200 watts let's try the toaster so that's an air conditioner induction cooktop and the toaster all running together 3050 watts note there's 3900 watts discharging from the batteries around about 300 amps currently because our solar is not particularly brilliant on a day like today we're only offsetting by 280 watts of solar but we're running the toaster induction cooktop and the air conditioner all from batteries Solar's jumped up to almost 1100 watts, offsetting the battery's output. We're still sitting at almost 350 watts on the AC loads. And 3300 out of the battery. It's a very grey, overcast day. Small sun patches. The 1500 watts of solar on the top best we've achieved this morning is about 1200 watts Oh, that is very cold. The air conditioner has dropped the van down to the temperature and is backing off. Still got the induction cooktop going and the toaster. Air conditioner is running, but it's ramped right down. 1000 watts coming in on solar. I just heard the toaster pop up, so now we're just running the induction cooktop and the air conditioner on idle. Just 1800 watts coming out. In theory, the induction cooktop was 1800 watts on its own. And there goes the kettle. 
So now all that's running is the air conditioner on idle. 66 watts. Now the batteries are being charged at 51 amps straight from solar. <laughs> this gives you the ability to run air fryers, slow cookers, microwaves, water heating elements, AC powered televisions, computer equipment and numerous other devices, all from batteries. We elected to install Victron equipment, except for the solar panels. Victron batteries are more expensive, but the possible discharge rate of this system is just over 400 amps. It is essential to get batteries that can supply that current. Many of the batteries I looked at had the battery management system built into the battery. For most of the batteries, that meant maximum discharge rates around 250 to 300 amps. Even with two batteries, it could be possible for one battery to shut down, which would immediately place all the load on the other battery. This could damage the BMS, effectively destroying the battery. We have had the system supplying 4600 watts, which is the combined AC and DC loads. This is a total discharge from batteries of 340 amps. Victron individual discharge rates from two 330 amp hour batteries we have installed is 400 amps per battery. To me, this is the first reason to use them. The second reason is the size and weight of these. At a width of 206 millimeters, a length of 359 millimeters, a height of 206 millimeters, and a weight per battery of 28 kilos, these were the smallest footprint and among the lightest batteries I found. Many people will not want a system as big as we have installed, and most would easily cope with a 2000 watt or 2600 watt inverter. The 2600 watt inverter will still run everything that's mentioned here with some power management. Solar requirements are to me as much as will fit, but it does come down to the use of the vehicle. If you travel to grey, overcast skies, the panels will be effective 5 to 6 hours a day and max out between 10 and 20% of their rated wattage. This needs to be balanced with your expected usage and time of that usage. I will leave this here. I hope it was of interest. It took us a journey of two years to get on the road with this van with COVID and supply delays, but we love it. This system gives us the freedom to park anywhere that we are allowed. That is freedom to travel New Zealand, and we will see you on the road perhaps.